What's League of Legends? What's a MOBA? Why does everybody hate this guy? All this and more in today's episode of Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Chavis, or probably better known as Grom. I'm a content creator on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, a lot of different social media platforms. If it's your first time here, please make sure you smash that subscribe button below. Also hit the bell, it'll let you know when I upload new content. If you're watching this video on a different social platform like LinkedIn, uh, I'm going to leave some comments below with some links. Please make sure you check those out. Any kind of engagement you can give, a follow, a, a, a subscribe, a retweet, anything will help me out a lot. Really helps with the algorithm, uh, with YouTube and with everything. So please, if, anything you can do, guys, is very, very much appreciated. Uh, so uh, let's get started. To understand what League of Legends is, we need to take one step back and explain the category that this game falls under. Most other games are pretty self-explanatory. First-person shooters shoot people in the first person. Platformers, you jump on platforms. RPGs, you get the point. League of Legends is a MOBA which stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. The first incarnation of this type of game was a game called Dota, which stands for Defense of the Ancients. Dota was initially a special game mode that was created by Steve Feek and Steve Mescon and the custom map creator in Warcraft 3. Warcraft 3 was a RTS or real-time strategy game. In Warcraft 3 you had many different types of units depending on the faction that you played, but each faction had a special elite units that functioned like your generals in the battlefield. They were generally the main characters to the storyline of Warcraft 3. What the Dota mod did was take out all the infantry or grunt type units and allowed you to play with only the generals in a tower defense style game which became the groundwork of a major shift in gaming history. So now that we've covered what a MOBA is, League of Legends is a MOBA. League of Legends has one of the most viewed categories on Twitch and is also one of the top most viewed games on Twitch, which is around 27 million people. It has a massive online uh, worldwide community and it's still one of the most played games worldwide despite being almost a decade old. Actually, it's over a decade old. Uh, League of Legends has two major maps. But for this video, we're only going to be covering the most common, which is Summoner's Rift. There's over 148 champions to choose from and 175 plus items to choose from. So League is a very deep game. The math required to figure out the different amount of champion combinations and item combinations is beyond me. But we'll just say it like this. It's a lot. <laughs> Uh, the amount of characters combined with the different builds and abilities combined with the less than friendly community, this game can be somewhat daunting for new players, but we're going to give you the basics in this video so you can jump into Summoner's Rift and hopefully have a decent amount of knowledge to know kind of what's going on. So what is the objective of League of Legends? Think of League like a game of chess, but the board, the pieces, and even the value of some of the units might shift and change. The basic premise of League is you are trying to destroy your enemy's nexus, aka their base, before they destroy yours, while trying to also destroy their towers which are part of their defensive structures leading to their base. There are different objectives that will pop up along the map as you play that your, your team is going to want to contest. Mainly Dragon which will give your team a slight to major buff depending on what type of dragon to spawn and Baron Nasher, which is basically a stronger version of the dragon that provides a game-changing buff and global currency for your entire team. League of Legends' most common map is Summoner's Rift, which is a 5 versus 5 battle. For the roles and positions, I'm going to go into the meta picks, which are the most common picks for the positions. But keep in mind, you can literally pick any character for any role. But just understand, if you pick a character that is not suited for the role that you choose, and you do badly, your team is going to probably be pretty upset with you, considering this is a team game. So top is generally played by a tank character. Tanks are usually beefy with a lot of health, and their main job is to try to engage fights and to draw attention off of your squishy carries. Top's role during the laning phase is to get gold, 
help secure rift herald as well as rotate mid and sometimes bot lane to help secure kills and push towers and also once the team fight phase starts that's when they want to try to be engaging if they did not fall too far behind during the laning phase mid lane mid lane is generally played by a mage character or an apc which stands for an ability power carry mid lane's job is to get as strong as possible during the laning phase and during the team fight phase do as much damage as possible so they are usually very squishy and they need a lot of protection to keep alive because they can be easily bursted down by the enemy characters jungle can be played by a variety of roles but the main objective of the jungler is to secure objectives like dragon and rift herald while also applying pressure to lanes that are winning or supporting losing lanes by ganking. Ganking is a coordinated sneak attack that will turn a 1v1 or a 2v2 in the case of bot lane into a 2v1 or a 3v2 respectively. Jungle is probably one of the more advanced positions and is not recommended for new players. Bot lane. Bot lane is the only lane that has two champions in the lane. Bot lane is comprised of an ADC, which stands for Attack Damage Carry and a Support. The ADC, similar to the APC mid lane, their job is to get stronger and over the course of the game they will be significantly more effective. The support's job is exactly what it sounds like. The support is to support and protect the ADC while in the laning phase because their early game is normally very weak until they get a few items. If the support does a good job and secures a few kills for the ADC, the team fight phase will be much easier because the ADC will be dishing out a lot more damage. The laning phase is the time when you are in your designated lane trying to accrue the most gold possible and build the greatest number of items. There are a few ways that you acquire gold, which is league currency for building items. CSing or farming is what you are doing while you're in lane, which is league jargon for creep score, which all that means is last hitting minions to get gold. Waves of minions will spawn on both sides of the map at 1 minute and 5 seconds into the game and will continue to spawn every 30 seconds until the game is over. There are three types of minions and their values do shift as the game goes on, so I'm not going to get too technical and do the exact amount that each minion is worth per timestamp because this video would be 30 minutes long. <laughs> So for simplicity's sake, the caster minions have the least amount of health and provide the least amount of gold. The melee minions have the second most health and provide the second highest amount of gold. The canyon minions, which spawn every third wave, provide the most amount of gold and have the most amount of health. You want to make sure you do not miss killing these minions. They are the highest priority because they give you the most experience and the most gold. The objective of the landing phase is to try to kill as many minions as possible while either trying to defend your tower from the enemy or attack the enemy's tower depending on who is pushing the lane. Just last hit the minions before they die, right? Sounds easy. Well, being able to CS will generally win you more games than not. It is something that you need to practice and focus on as it's not nearly as easy as it sounds. Every champion is slightly different with their attack animations, how fast their attacks come out, how much damage they do. So hitting that minion right before it dies is actually a lot harder than it looks, depending on what champion you're playing, especially at level one. The team fight phase generally happens when one team or another's tower has been lost. The objective of this phase is to try to win objectives just like the laning phase, but it will generally be a more coordinated effort from both sides. Also, dying during this phase is much more punishing due to the respawn timer being a lot longer as it's later in the game. So it's not uncommon to lose one big team fight and then go on to lose the game. The main thing about this phase is you want to make sure you are positioning and setting up your characters in optimal spots, especially if you're one of the carries, mid or bot lane. If you get caught out of position and the enemy team kills you, your team is now going to be fighting a 4v5 without one of its major damage dealers and you are probably going to lose the, lose the fight and maybe the game. The main thing about this phase is you want to try to capitalize on team fights and if you win a team fight, push for objectives or towers and or their base. If you are losing team fights, you want to focus on defending your towers 
and try your best to stop the onslaught of the enemy. So that's the basics of League. It's a free to play game, so I highly recommend you go check it out and give it a download. Every week they have new champions that roll out that you can experiment and try. And if you like the champion, it's pretty easy to obtain them after a couple of days of playing. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.